Hey, welcome to the channel, guys. We're a homesteading and how-to channel. We're based out of Niagara Falls, and lately I've been doing a ton of maintenance on this uh, 2011 Mercedes-Benz. It's the GL350 with the diesel. Uh, it's a new old vehicle for us. We picked up seven-seater. We love it, but we got to address the main issue here, and this is uh, oil blow-by. This vehicle, I don't know what Mercedes was thinking. Basically, they plumbed the crankcase ventilation hose directly next to the turbocharger. And I think, along with a lot of other people, I think what the issue is, is the turbo spools up and it literally sucks oil from the crankcase steady uh, through the turbocharger, through the intercooler, through the plumbing, back into the turbo. And then what's happening is the uh, air intakes are getting uh, really uh, caked in with a uh, bunch of, well, oily residue, right? You know, along with the EGR, that's, that's also an issue, but um, we can definitely help out and solve the blow-by issue, hopefully, with this Proven 200 that I'm gonna install. I've been talking a lot about it in the previous videos. It's finally here, all the plumbing's here, and we're ready to uh, get after it. So I'm gonna be doing a voiceover, showing you exactly how I'm gonna be installing it. It looks like it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Uh, I've got the same model on my Ram 1500 Eco Diesel, and I absolutely love it. Highly recommended you get one of these. So, I'll quit blabbering, and we will uh, get after it. All right, first things first, you're going to remove the engine cover. Pretty straightforward, you just uh, pull the tabs, lift it out, and we're on to the strut tower here. Pretty straightforward, you got four bolts holding it on. They are... I believe, yeah, E14 socket, and then if you use a 5.8 uh, box wrench just to hold the hold the bolt. There's four of those. Now, to get at the last one, you need to remove this little uh, washer bolt. It's kind of holding this little shroud on. You bend that out of the way, and you can get uh, the fourth bolt out. Once you remove that shroud, you're going to use a uh, 10 millimeter. Pull these last two little bolts out here. They... Uh, basically cover up the crankcase ventilation hose. Once you got those bolts off, you can go ahead, pull your strut tower out. That'll give you access to actually remove the uh, little right side shroud here. Pull that out of there, and then you'll have access to the crankcase ventilation hosing. So, you know, the long short of it is, it's, it's very simple, but we're trying to cut this hose in a good spot where we can route the catch can. Here's a quick little uh, shot of the parts I used. The oil catch can is actually one inch inside diameter. It's quite large. And the crankcase ventilation hosing is 5 8 inside diameter. So you're going to want a couple of couplers and a couple of 90s. Now, here's me trying to play around with the uh, plumbing a little bit, seeing kind of what works. You're going to want to spend some time and really think it through. You know, for me, with the two one inch hoses, I felt like it was a good idea to kind of tuck them next to that right side air filter. Now the reason you want those 90 uh, degree, you know, one inch fittings is because it's really tight up there trying to get that 5 8 hose and that one inch to meet up. So definitely keep a couple 90s on hand. Cutting the hoses, uh, it's no big deal. I was just using a hacksaw. It went pretty good. Make sure you give it a good clean out. You don't want any of that debris in the catch can. Um, I kind of plumbed it up here a little bit and then I actually decided to rotate the catch can. I more or less was floating it. Uh, I pointed the inlet and outlet towards the engine bay there, towards the uh, front windshield, instead of towards the the rad. That ended up working pretty good. All right, so we're plumbing it in here towards the crankcase vent. Remember, the inlet for the catch can it comes from the crankcase ventilation, goes through the uh, Proven 200, then back towards the turbo. Okay, so make sure you got those hoses lined up in a good spot. Now, what I did is I... I cut the crankcase vent hose in the flattest spot because it, it's kind of a weird hose. It makes a bit of a roll and then it flattens out and expands. So I picked a really nice even spot. And because I had those 90s, I was able to, uh, to kind of manipulate the uh, the big hose there. It worked quite well. Yeah, then once you once you cut the uh, once you cut the crankcase vent hose, there's no turning back. Once you've got your uh, crankcase vent hose cut you're ready to put your 5 8 to 1 inch in i kind of strategically placed it and cut it in the spot where leaving the crankcase uh, 
vent, I was able to plumb it directly into one of those uh, one inch lines. And I only ended up needing 190 to uh, make mine fit. Yeah, then I basically just marked up the uh, hose. I cut it. I put the 5 eighths to 1 inch in. Now, I needed a little, to use the 90, you know, I needed a 1 inch to 1 inch piece of hose, basically. So I cut this little piece of 1 inch, went from the 5 eighths to the 1 inch to the 90. And that was, that little setup you see there was um, pretty helpful. I was able to tuck that underneath the actual, uh, I guess, towards the, like the firewall, basically and uh, just barely get my cover back on it's um it's a bit of a tight fit like you know i may end up changing it we'll see but for me like i don't i don't really care what these things look like these mods like you know if you're one of those guys who needs a super clean install you know you might want to uh kind of re just really think about your plumbing for me this was uh this worked just fine you know i was able to tuck that uh 90 underneath there and yeah it worked uh it worked quite well this was definitely the trickiest part of the uh the whole install just trying to figure out how to get these hoses uh routed nicely here's a little close-up shot of the uh the install after i got it tucked in under there so yeah i mean really in my opinion it doesn't look too bad kind of looks like a little uh frankenstein-ish but you know, at the end of the day, you could actually just go 5 eighths to 5 eighths and uh, find some oil resistant hose and just keep it all 5 eighths. Um, that would definitely reduce the amount of uh, giant hose you got in there. Last thing to do is to hook up your uh, half inch uh, hose for the bottom of the catch can to drain it. So I used a uh, basically half inch heater hose hooked onto this ball valve and then I got a uh, barbed uh, connection to threaded so that I could just basically slide the half inch hose on there and uh, yeah pretty much just zip tied her to the bottom of the uh, frame there that location will change I was just uh, trying to get it set up so I can go for a little test drive all right guys well that's it for this video um, pretty straightforward install the hardest part is just making the cut for that uh, positive crankcase vent hose because it's kind of like a wonky little thing eh um, thankfully for me, I was prepared. I had a, a couple of uh, one inch to one inch 90 uh, barbed plastic. So I can kind of manipulate where I wanted my tubing to go. You know, it's not super pretty. They, they rarely are, especially when you got that big one inch stuff. I would suggest if you wanted to keep it more clean, what you could do is go five eighths to five eighths and then plummet five eighths and then, and then basically get a five eighths to three quarter adapter and just, you know, cut yourself a teeny bit of that red hose put that over the probe in 200 and then just go 5 8 directly in that would make things a lot easier for me i just i i wanted to keep it kind of the same as my eco diesel and i'm using the one inch uh, nice big fat you know tons of airflow um and for me i just barely get the cover on so i'm happy with that now i did take it around the block i went for a really hard spirited run there so no check engine light uh, so far hopefully it's all good I did check it out. I'm definitely getting a little bit of oily residue already, even after just like a 10 minute drive. So yeah, we'll keep it uh, posted there. Um, I'll let you know, maybe I'll do an update video in six months here and we'll see kind of how much oil this thing really is catching. And I, um, I estimate it's, it's gonna be working pretty good. So anyways, if you're uh, new here guys, consider subscribing. If you got the Mercedes Benz diesel, you'll definitely wanna check out the playlist. I've got quite a few videos coming up here with the maintenance and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and we're mostly a, uh, lately it's mostly been a how-to kind of channel, but we do have this homestead here and we're working on our uh, two-story addition on the old farmhouse. So we're going to have kind of like a vlog style thing coming through and uh, we're really excited for that. Anyhow, so uh, let me know in the comments if you decided to go ahead with this install. I'd really like to see what you got. And uh, yeah, other than that, I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Take care.